This lily will be my reference photo for today's tutorial. And as always, first of all, the schematic building of the open flower. From the center, at the same angle, are three upper petals. And between the upper ones grow the lower petals. And there are six petals in all. It's very simple. When I have drawn a lily with a pencil in the size I need, I circle the drawing with a marker, correcting it. I carefully study all the curves of the petals, and especially the tips of the petals, because they are all different and each has its own special character, which is important to preserve. I think with the drawing you will not have difficulties, but just in case you can make a print screen. Today I have a clear resist. Later I will tell you why. Before painting the silk, I first wet the lily with water. And here is my favorite set of colors. Yellow, blue, crimson. Two synthetic round brushes with thin tips. And now I remove excess moisture from the flower with porous paper, as usual. The first step is to paint those characteristic green stripes at the base of the petals. Because my brush is not very wet, the dye doesn't spread out all the way through, and the strokes retain their shape. Notice that if you apply the dye with a dry brush and then dip the dye brush into the paper again, the dye almost doesn't spread out. You can see more about this topic in this video where I said that the skill of controlling the degree of wetness of the brush is key in this technique and will allow you to take your silk painting to the next level. Feeling the degree of, of wetness of the brush is only achieved by practice. At the very least, you could try practicing on, on an unwanted piece of silk. But back to the lily. I'm going to leave the edges of the petals white, as in our reference so I don't bring a lot of diluted pink dye to the edge of the petal. And I also leave some distance to the green middles at the base of the petal, so that the green and pink don't mix yet. Since I don't let the dye flow, I need to blend it out. Here I will, of course, leave the edge white as well. By the way, if I had the resisting color, say gray, I could put it around the green wedges and it would be easier to paint. But I chose transparent resist today because the edges of the lily petals are white and the color of the resist is kind of woven into this white border because of white color of silk. That is. It's a kind of a part of the petal and will not be visible at all in the final result. It will be better seen more clear when I start painting the background. I mean, we won't practically see the resist line. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I'm careful about resist color and especially transparent. Because resist color can offset the most beautiful painting if it's too visible, too prominent. And that's why I focus so many of my videos on how to change the color of clear resist. There is one more important thing to consider with this technique, which is how dense or thin your silk is. 
the more dense the silk the longer it will stay wet but if you are painting thin silk then obviously it will dry faster and then it may be worth wetting two petals with water painting them and then wetting and painting the next two petals and so on of course all those skills come with experience in any case enjoy learning this technique you may have noticed that now there is an empty space between the green and pink color this white color is kind of inappropriate here so i just carefully softened this border with a clean barely wet brush the next step is to draw the details while the silk is still dry the dots characteristic for lilies are being drawn dots can go to the white edge of the petal too and where the silk is still wet the dots spread out a bit Please give your reaction to this video. It's very important to us with the YouTube algorithm. Next to the more saturated points, you can draw less saturated ones. And if you compare how these speckles lay here and here, you will notice that on this petal the silk was a bit wetter. On the one side I would like to add a little bit of a subtle cold shade so that the petal is not monotonous but has a slight gradation a little variety in the next step i add veins that are concentrated along the center axis of the petal As the dark green background around the lily appears, it begins to protrude more sharply forward. And as I said before, the resist is not visible at all. That is, it's part of the white rim of the petal. And that seems like a great result to me. Well, until next time, thanks for watching and painting with me.